What's the worst case of ridge kid syndrome you've ever seen? I'm going to copy my post from a helicopter parent thread from a few months ago I played football in the local kids league. One kid from another team was basically untouchable as his dad was a major sponsor of the league and would donate money for uniforms, drinks etc. His son was a pretty good receiver but didn't like getting hit and his parents made a big deal of leaving their son alone so he can develop his skills. He was insufferable. Anytime he scored a TD, he would do over the top celebrations and mock all the other players, his teammates included point then came high school. Most of the kids from the league ended up in one of two schools. He went to mine and some other players, during tryouts, he did well. The coaches were mostly focused on skills and minimal contact during the first few rounds of cuts the final round was when things got interesting. Full contact was permitted and he got rocked over and over again. No one was actually trying to tackle any harder than normal, it's just this dude didn't know what to do when he got tackled. So he screamed and cried a lot point he didn't make the team point until his dad came down to the school and offered to donate money for uniforms and some other goodies for our sports teams. So he made the team and again we were told to take it easy on him a bit. So we did. But the other teams didn't. And he went up against some of the players he mocked previously. And they remembered. RQB kept passing to him, and he was getting repeatedly smashed. Over and over again point it was the only time our team cheered for the other team. He quit playing football after that. Two girls, both nice and fairly level headed, but also just raised to damn rich one would take a taxi everywhere in town. It was a very safe, small college town with three campus buses, and she taxi across campus. She lived two blocks away from me and would take a taxi from her dorm to my house. Google Maps says it's a full four minute walk. She swore she just had a terrible sense of direction and couldn't figure out where we lived, but you'd think after the first embarrassingly short taxi ride she'd throw our address into Google Maps and just walk point the other would regularly complain about people not knowing how to manage their money. It took a while to figure out but eventually it clicked that she meant very poor people didn't know how to invest their money in stocks and bonds. Then one day we were having a conversation where she revealed she didn't think a house in Detroit in 2010 could possibly cost under 1 million dollars. I told her I grew up in a nice dollar sign 180k house and she thought I was dumb or lying. Shattered her world when I showed her my home on Zillow. When she graduated college she complained about how much stuff cost all the time. It was nice seeing her learn the value of a dollar finally. Had a friend in high school whose dad was uninvolved. He was raised middle class like myself and lived with his mom and stepdad. After high school he worked towards becoming an electrician and was saving for his first apartment point his dad eventually came around when he was right out of high school and started giving him money here and there when he needed it. His dad owned a large company on the east coast and was a multi-millionaire. Soon his dad convinced him to quit trade work and gave him a job at his business. Shortly after, he was promoted to a managerial position he wasn't qualified for and paid way too much. He'd get drunk while on conference, calls and nobody questioned him since he was the boss's son. Point his dad bought him his first home, almost half a million dollars, and multiple cars. He took up horse racing and, quickly, we had nothing in common. Gone we are the days of dumb teenage stuff, going fishing, hiking and video games together. He quickly found a girlfriend whose dad was a multi-millionaire. She was 30 and still putting everything on dad's credit card. I couldn't keep up with their lifestyle and very quickly we faded as friends. After his girlfriend and him broke up, she told me that he was actually severely depressed and almost drove his car off a bridge multiple times. Deep down he was having issues with wanting to live up to his dad's lifestyle and standards, but losing his old friends and life. It's too bad. I haven't seen him in probably 4 years now. We tried to reconnect a few times, but it just doesn't work anymore. Came back from a music festival in Southeast Asia, got VIP tickets, I swear this isn't about me. One of the other festival goers is a 20 something year old Asian girl who looks like she is straight out of the movie Crazy Rich Asians. This chick had a photographer following her around snapping pics of her posing in front of the stage with various acts, getting in the way of other people trying to dance. 
She asked security if she could get them to clear a section for her to get an unobstructed view of the stage for better photos. She bought a couple of bottles, six, for her table and again, had the photographer take an incredible number of photos of her posing with her bottles of Martel and Jameson. She was incredibly rude to the wait staff, snapping her fingers, and in general talking to them, like they were lower class citizens she asked my mate and I, both westerners, to hang with her, and her mates at her table, and again, have the photographer take photos of her posing with us at the table. The other two guys from the group, both Asian, approached us when they saw that we're at a table, and it looked like we had made some friends. When they approached us, the girl and her friends got quiet, spoke amongst themselves in Indonesian, and basically shooed them away. We left them, after they did that, and walked over to our friends. One of the guys is Indo, and he told us that she basically told them to get lost and know your place. Attended an international high school in Hokimin City, where a lot of new wave millionaires kids live. The school was ridiculous, a third of the kids were expats, perfectly lovely kids, a third were local Vietnamese kids whose parents were working their ass off to send them to a private school, and the other third were these millionaire kids they wouldn't ever hesitate to show off their mummy and daddy's wealth. They'd pull up to school in Lamborghinis, Ferraris etc etc. And if their Rolls Royce didn't come on time to pick them up after school it would be a straight phone call to their other driver to come pick me up right now point they'd be such dicks 24 over 7 to the non-rich locals, classist as kids, and constantly just bringing up the most trivial things and complaining about them. I'm literally not exaggerating here when I say this, for instance, my maid bought me the wrong LV bag. I told her it was the tan brown one not the light brown one. Ugh I can't believe it, now we have to send her on the jet to Shanghai to get it. They all paid and used family connections to get into Harvard, Stanford, a pen etc etc, and even now constantly complain on Facebook and Instagram about how crap their residence hall food was, so they just hired some faking personal chef or something. Mind you, these kids were the dumbest bunch I've ever seen. One of them literally was clueless about the most basic facts, but still got into business management points despised the lot of them. Glad I'm in Europe, far away from most of them. My ex-girlfriend actually could make a whole list here, but I'll name the worst offenders each year during the summer. They throw away all of their clothing and buy a completely new closet of clothing in Paris. They make sure that the clothing gets destroyed to and not recycled point she was flabbergasted when I told her that earning 100k plus per year, Netherlands, is quite an unusually high amount of money. When I went on trips with her and her family we would go 180 kilometers per hour or faster. When I asked her dad he would say that it is cheaper for him to get everywhere quickly and pay fines then to drive according to the speed limit point this one might not be rich kid syndrome but definitely feels odd to me. Never once in her life went to anything else than Luxe resorts. When I took her camping last year she was horrified to see how camping looks like point genuinely believed that poor people were poor because they were lazy and that if they had the right morals they would be rich in no time point when asked how they earned so much. Her dad told about tax evasion techniques and how they give Polish immigrants way under minimum loan because he doesn't complain about it to management which her dad is part of point just in general. Weird behavior. My friend, Brooke Hansen, was kind of the opposite of this. I went to school with him in the UK. Son of Lord Hansen who was very big in the 1980s. He had kind of toned down things that millionaire kids had, Mitsubishi sports hatches, tailor to come down and measure him for school clothes. But he was in fact very shy and modest. He was also adopted in the mother, the frightful Geraldine. Simply got bored of him and treated him like sheet, but in an icy distant way. The family would, say, have Christmas in London or New York, and would always find some excuse for him to be elsewhere, like the Caymans or Florida, with plenty of money but all alone. They got it into his head that he was stupid and would never amount to anything, so they gave him enough money to live a playboy lifestyle, but no stake in the company, the Hanson Trust. The older brother, James, and his sister were all made shareholders and got executive roles. On his own, 
Brooke set up a helicopter taxi service for the company which was quite successful, but when Lord Hanson died, this was immediately taken away from him and subsumed into some other branch of the company. He didn't get any shares, but was told that he would always have enough money to do what he wanted so, what did he want? They wouldn't treat him seriously and so he decided to just give up. He said he wanted his own plane, his own jet assisted helicopter, a house in London and a villa in the south of France and to be director of a model agency. He got all those things, played around for a few years, didn't have any real friends, just hangers on, and then died of a heart attack in a London pub aged. Back in elementary school, an old friend of mine was moving to a neighboring town which was a lot more wealthy. They already lived in a pretty big house to begin with, but little did I realize how big their new home was after 5th grade they moved, and I got a chance to check out his new home. Swimming pool, basement bar and entertainment system, spiral staircase, two fireplaces. This was a mansion two years later somehow he was brought up in a conversation among a few of us, and some girl managed to get his cell phone number. I know 7th graders with phones lol. We tried to reach him, and no answer every time. Eventually his mother actually called a friend of mine and said she'd call the police because she told us her son didn't know who we were. Point one day we biked out to his home and make a surprise visit. We saw the family peeking through the window, but they ignored us completely. Found out from a classmate, who was his old next door neighbor, that he wanted nothing to do with us. He claimed he doesn't know who any of us were, or why we were trying to call him point clearly, this kid got a little too rich and wealthy he forgot about where he came from, and who his old friends were. My current roommate. I'm a senior in college, and have been living in this apartment since the beginning of junior year. It's one of the nicer complexes around the school, and close to the top of the price range, but I'm fortunate enough that my financial aid covers my rent and tuition. I still have to cover utility bills and food and transportation and everything else, though, and because of the nature of my job, my hours can vary from nearly full time to less than 10 hours per week with no real way to predict what next month will look like in that respect. My roommate has also been here since I moved in. Indian guy from Mumbai. Apparently used to go to my school, which happens to be a very large and very good school, studying photography, but either dropped out, or failed out, since he doesn't take classes anymore. He doesn't work either, and stays up every night until 4 or 5 am, while sleeping until 2 or 3 pm on the regular. He keeps virtually no food in the kitchen, instead opting for eating out for almost every meal that is, unless he brings some of his friends back to the apartment without telling me beforehand, and playing awful mumble rap and European soccer games through the living room stereo, until they pass out from drinking Fork's fancy liquor. After they all wake up, they slick back their hair, and go play soccer, until they decide they want more liquor and sheety rap. We split the utility bills about 50 over 50, rounding in my favor, since I manage the accounts. During the summer, the electricity bill for our 2 bed slash 1 bath apartment was more than $160 per month, because he would leave the account running literally all day and all night, turning it back on after I turned it off. Right now, in winter, when it's not uncommon for it to be less than 20 degrees outside, I'll wake up to find all of the living room windows open after I turned the heater on the previous night. I've told him before that he's being incredibly inconsiderate because I pay for half of the bill too, not to mention wasteful, but he literally does not care point why. Because his parents bankroll everything. They must be faking loaded for him to even be here, but they send him thousands and thousands of dollars every month, so that he can sleep, drink, and hang with his soxer bro friends. He also has credit cards from at least four different companies judging from our mailbox. And the cooker? He's hung me out to dry, so many goddamn times on utility bills and other things he's owed me money for. We decided to go half in on RTV and, only after I ordered it did he tell me that he didn't have the several hundred dollars he owed me and that I needed just yet, since his parents hadn't sent him money yet. Right now I'm waiting for his half of the utility bills that I paid for two weeks ago, which is not unusual in the slightest. One time he didn't pay me back 
until after I'd already paid the utilities for the next month point he's so incredibly inconsiderate and oblivious to the situation, and no matter how many times I've tried to talk to him about it, nothing's changed. I swear to god, he's turning me into a communist. Nobody should have that kind of coddling from their riches parents. So there's this spot near where I live just off the freeway and up a mountain. It's a sort of Makiyoid point and all the kids go up there to drink, smoke, etc. Point my high school was full of kids suffering from a flunza, totally the type to live their whole lives in a rich, safe, mind-numbing bubble and think nothing of it. The type to break their iPhone because they wanted a new one, to crash their first car, probably a BMW or Mercades, and get a brand new one the next day, to expect the world to be given to them without earning it. When I was a senior, a junior went up there with a couple friends on a foggy night. Now I didn't know this kid personally, but I knew he wasn't up to any good. I'd heard stories about how much of an asshole he was, and I'd personally seen him snort coke at school, so obviously they were drunk, on drugs, or more likely both point he drives down the mountain like this, and can barely see anything, because of the fog, then hits a motorcyclist coming the opposite direction and kills him. He got no kind of charges because, supposedly, the motorcyclist was drunk and on the wrong side of the road. Whether or not this is true, he took a human life and was underaged while under the influence and didn't have to do so much as community service for it. He didn't seem to feel any kind of remorse. He boasted, even. Or, more often, he would complain about the damage done to his BMW. LDR a kid from my high school killed someone, and the greatest remorse he felt was for his car. Two stories here. One about an actual rich person, and one about a poor person who, when we went to college, faked like she was rich. Point rich friend story. So my best friend was rich, and always got what he wanted. His parents are rich plus, his father also works in a fed gov agency so, not only was he spoiled, he also had an endless get out of jail free card for petty crimes, graffiti, stealing sheet, etc. One story in particular comes to mind. We went to get new skate shoes. I had a strict budget, and in efforts to be humble, and on my level he bought some skate shoes within the price range I had mentioned prior to visiting the skate shop. When we got the store, he copped some globes and was thrilled. During that time, I decided to stretch my budget by like $30 more and get this pair of America shoes, which he actually hated on because he was a faking hater. Fast forward 5 days later, and literally the only thing he's talking about is how he wanted my shoes and I should have wanted his shoes. He was saying sheet, like it's all your fault, I only got the globes, because you told me you were going to spend $40 on shoes and sheet like I hate the globes, I would have gotten your shoes, but you got them instead. I couldn't faking stand it, over and over again non-stop, so we decided to share the shoes. The day he got the Americas was the last time I ever wore them. He literally hated the fact, that I had more expensive shoes than he did. Meanwhile, I had no car and a job. He had a fake nice car, and to this day, has never worked point fake rich story, I was living with my roommate in college. Both of us lived, had our girlfriends living with us. Our girlfriends were cousins, so I knew his girlfriend very well. She was never rich growing up, in fact, her father was an ambulance chaser and welfare manipulator, have kids with his wife, but never get married for single mother benefits slash etc. One day my roommate comes home with some presents from Victoria's Secret. He had spent around $250, and because he had spent that much, it came with a free gift, a sort of tote bag thingy. His girlfriend, being the wannabe rich beach that she was, had to make sure none of the items were on sale. Naturally she visits the website, and confirms that the items were not on sale. Perfect. However, the tote bag was a free gift with purchase. I swear to god she was screaming at the top of her lungs, throwing things all over the house, and saying sheet like how, dare you give me something free and more sheet like free sheet is for poor people, then ended up breaking up. She also faked her voice, and was one of those girls, that put on her face daily. She married a bald doctor who is 10 years older than her somewhere random in the northeast. She dropped out of school, drunk post soroy for bad grammar and laziness. Went to UIUC. So we had a large population of overseas students. 
some of which were very rich. My freshman year a friend told a story about a kid who didn't know how to use an ATM point what had happened is that this kid flew over from Asia somewhere for when school started. They were at the bars. You only needed to he 18 to get in bars in Urbana, 19 if you're in Champagne. I think it was at most 3 weeks into the school year when he ran out of cash. His parents gave him $5,000 when he flew over and he had run out already somehow. Since he didn't know how to use an ATM, his parents always gave him cash and I guess he didn't want to use a credit card, he asked said friend to withdraw cash for him. My friend offered to show him how to use an ATM. Nope, he didn't want to learn. Just gave him his card. Friend needed to know his pin and also explained how you shouldn't give your pin to anyone. Explained how he was lucky that he was a good guy and wasn't going to scam him and how it could have gone much worse if he gave it to a bad guy. The overseas kid called his parents for the pin and said it didn't matter who he gave his pin to because there's always money in his account and it wouldn't run out. Then asked said friend to withdraw $5,000. Had to explain to him the maximum is usually $250 to $300. Kid had a fit how am I supposed to survive off of only that much? At my tailor's shop, some young pup threw open the doors to storm in wearing nothing but a towel and a bad attitude. He demanded I start fitting him for new clothes immediately. I was kinda just standing there gawking because like I said, he was literally wearing just a towel. When I didn't move right away to get started, he actually hit me with a do you have any idea who I am? I didn't. So I get started with fitting this brat for new clothes, and he tells me about the circumstances surrounding his current state of undress. Apparently, a host stole his clothes. She had taken them in an attempt to blackmail him into giving her more money. I was kind of surprised, because if it were me, my money would probably be with my clothes to begin with, so I asked him, wasn't your money with your clothes? He looks shocked at the question. Certainly not. A gentleman's hand is never far from his purse. So my father says. Then he waves his money purse around in front of my face. I wanted to smack it out of his hand. He keeps going with his story. She told me if I wanted to keep my dignity, then I'd give her my purse and walk home wearing my clothes. He shook his head scornfully and continued to explain. A gentleman's dignity isn't in his clothes. If I handed over my purse simply to save myself an embarrassment then I would be handing over my dignity. He looked thoughtful for a second, then spoke softly, like he came to some sort of realization. It only follows that a gentleman's dignity is in his purse then. I think I heard my father say something of the sort. Rela slash in 14th this is deep material point anyway, I finished fitting the little brat, then he has the audacity to look me in the eye as he short changes me on the clothes he just bought. I tell you, rich kids are one of nature's great destructive forces, like floods or tornadoes. When you're struck with one of these catastrophes, the only thing an average man can do is grit his teeth and try to minimize the damage. Different, but though a little sunshine would be good amongst this post point my sister was bffw slash a girl in hs whose family owned a very large global distribution company founded and based in our town. They were extremely wealthy, with the largest home in the county, and more money than you could imagine. In fact the dad made the news not too long ago for being swindled out of millions in a betting scam where he was being blackmailed. Anyways, the girl was very sweet and humble, but of course spoiled with all the best clothing and shoes, and we were dirt poor. Like we only got new socks and underwear at Christmas poor this girl gave my sister all of her hand-me-downs, most of which she only wore once. Designer jeans, multiple pairs of Doc Martens, it was the 90s, jewelry, you name it. My sister didn't get bullied for her shabby clothes like the rest of us did, and was very popular due to the kindness of her friend who didn't judge her for being poor, always invited her along, and gave her clothes. To make her fit in point the rich girl went away to college, and came back to run the family company, and has quickly turned it around post-scandal. She donates large amounts to local charities, and is very active on many boards. But you can also see her sweaty at the local YMCA, or with a ratty ponytail on Saturday at Target. Sweet as ever. The Chinese students at my private university were in a league of their own. 
like the average person there was bad enough, but they were in a league of their own, although I did come to know a few who were great, so obviously not across the board at all. They had their parents buy them ridiculously expensive cars to sit in student lots, they refused to talk to anyone that wasn't from China, and they were really disrespectful to lecturers by talking and browsing the internet. I guess it's not the worst story, but it was all the little things that seemed to get worse and worse as the year went on point, although my favorite story comes from a group of very white freshmen. I was completing a volunteer section of a class at a local juvenile correction center, and while the group of juniors and seniors in my class were filling out paperwork for background checks, a class of freshmen also came in with their professor for another class. They had to start their applications and there was an uproar when they discovered they'd have to give their socials on the applications to work there. A lot of them had to call their moms to get the number, and one boy goes I'm not comfortable giving that information out. A girl asked if they were allowed to ask for it point you're applying for a job, you're applying for a job in a jail. Really? They had no concept of the need to provide their socials. They were offended by it. My class laughed about it for months. I can't even imagine going into college without having ever filled out a job application. I can't believe their parents sent them to school without thinking hey, maybe I should explain this. Maybe I should give them a copy of important documents it was crazy. I'm sure this will get buried, but a few years back I was a counselor at a super rich all girls camp in Massachusetts. The parents would pay $16,000, plus more if you wanted your kid to learn to ride a bike or a horse, for 8 weeks at what was essentially a country club point, so I've grown up in Montana all my life. I was convinced that I would come in with some Montana tough love and teach these girls how to be good compassionate people point whelp, I was wrong point these girls were not just spoiled, they had entitlement ingrained into their DNA. I would get comments daily from these little sheets that they were better than me and that they didn't have to do anything that I said because they paid me and I was just a counselor. I had one girl who was 12 who came from a divorced home and one parent gave her an iPhone and the other a Blackberry and she would text herself from one phone to the other. One bragged about how her parents were going to buy her a nose job when she turned 18. One girl who particularly liked me kept saying that she would fly me out to New York after camp so I could be her nanny oof point it was especially bad on parents and grandparents days. We, the staff, were not allowed to be seen sitting or eating and parents would whine to us about us not spending our own pitiful paycheck to buy their kids treats. Grandparents were especially bad because they were old money types and would try to one up each other with their cars or chauffeurs. One set even landed their helicopter on our soccer field and drove around on their own golf cart all day. I sheet you not point we even had a formal meeting before grandparents day where the owner of the camp told us not to gawk if slash when we saw an older man with a much younger wife who was clearly an inheritance hunter my god. I could go on and on but to answer the question the most interesting thing I noticed about these rich little sheets were little things that were buried in their habits. For one these kids didn't share like, at all. They would have their own set of nice gel pens to write letters home, and if their best camp friend asked to use one, they'd say no point second, you know how, if someone needs to cross a line of people perpendicularly, the normal thing to do is for you to take a step back for a moment to let them cross, and then move back up into line, not these girls. If they saw you coming to cross their line, as many as possible would crowd forward, so you'd have to pass behind them. Totally bizarre point I have stories for days about those little demons. There was a kid a year behind me in high school that I had in a Spanish class of mine who was obnoxiously rich in an already obnoxiously rich school. He would flaunt his money in the worst way, make fun of people's cloths, brag about the new stuff his parents bought him etc. I moved away once I left school and heard that in his senior year he got belligerent and showed up to our school's homecoming football game. He got into a fight, left the game, and on his way home drove his fancier sub head on into a car filled with teachers from another school, killing two of them. He was 17. His dad was a super well-connected lawyer I Ike, so no jail time, no scared straight, no ankle bracelet, just probation for killing two young women. I came home about a year after that and ran into him at a party where he was sheet-faced. 
he had been completely ostracized by everyone there for what he had done and had become a pariah. I talked to him a bit about what had happened and he clearly felt no remorse and resented how everyone had been treating him. I told him what a prick I thought he was and he told me that I had no idea how much responsibility it was to be as important as he was he drove home. Years later I looked him up and found that he had started giving talks at high schools, community centers and juvies about his experience and freely owned up to getting off too easily. I read an article he wrote about how it took him years to feel anything close to guilt, but that once he did he changed the trajectory of his life. He seemed like a really good dude now. He contracted some crazy rare form of cancer soon after he changed course and died very quickly after it was made public. Some people are shitty and stay shitty, but some people see the error of their ways. We have to hope that all of the people talked about in this thread can grow the fuck up and live a productive and meaningful life like this kid tried to do. This story always makes me sad, happy, then sad again, but I'd like to think that people can grow. Oh man, just for this, I created an account and evolved from unregistered lurker to a productive member of this internet society. For the record, this is a 100% true story. As crazy as it all sounds about 7 years ago I was a young, dumb, full of rum marine out in 29 palms. Was in a barracks room with 3 other dudes. Two of them had the same blue collar background as me. We got along great. The third guy, not so much. This kid was a skinny, shoulders perpetually hunched down Japanese slash Jewish guy from an affluent city in SoCal, and both his parents were some bigwig corporate types. He was also a furry, so I'll refer to him as such. Immediately after we all moved into the bricks, we got a taste for who he is as a person. One of our guys had a TV, and as soon as furry came in and dropped his junk, he grabbed up the TV and started going on about the best place to position it and how much we will all split the cable bill and stuff about HBO and blah blah. Totally threw us off until he got distracted by picking out the best secretary dresses slash desk combination in the room for himself. Day one down. Too many more to go point time went on. Sometimes we interacted well with this kid. Sometimes we didn't. He was just faking weird. All he ever did was sit and watch anime on his laptop. And if he wasn't watching anime, he was playing on his Nintendo DS. He never ate at the chow hall with everyone. He would literally sprint to Taco Bell, get his food to go, then sprint back just to watch his anime in the room. Every. Single. Bleeding as whole. Colonic ampass. Day. Our NCOs would joke that when driving around base they had to be aware of coyotes and furry just sprinting across the road in front of cars. He also liked to lock us out of the room when we all left. And by lock I mean jam a faking chair against the doorknob so we can't open it from the outside. Just so he could continue to sit and watch his cartoons and in point naturally we all made fun of him because we were members of the world's most elite fighting force and had the combined IQ of an aborted fetus, but we were only trying to help, I swear. We'd talk sheet all the time, he'd talk sheet back, I'd describe in detail all the times I used his toothbrush travel holder as a prostrate stimulate while I was jerking off in the shower, he'd get angry point now none of us knew he was rich at this point. We thought he was just a weirdo who called us peasants and muggles, not kidding, and threatened to sue us to death. It wasn't until one day, when my roommate was out in the parking lot having a smoke and probably harassing women, when he saw an ISIS Lexus sitting outside our barracks and a guy who was standing besides it in a suit, that my roommate decided to walk over and ask him what's up. The suit guy says he's waiting for Mr. Furry. Do buy a TF bro, are you a fed here? To arrest his as for being weird, no, this suit man was Furry's family driver. Turns out every weekend, Furry was having his the guy drive the three or so hours from his hometown to 29 Palms to pick him up and bring him home, just to get driven back Sunday nights. That's when we finally got it out of Furry that he was rich, his parents were CEOs, and the only reason he joined the Marines was because his father, a former Air Force officer, told him he couldn't get his inheritance unless he served point well this explained the peasant thing and his general unwillingness to interact with us in any normal or positive way. He was constantly and obnoxiously telling us how rich he was, how much better he was than us, saying sheet about our poorest family and just good old genuine uppity as behavior towards us. 
but the ridge kid syndrome doesn't explain why he's a furry, but I'll go over that, because I'm all hopped up on Mountain Dew, and on roll point one day furry was being himself, and one of my roommates had enough. He was this big dude from Bama, and he jumped off his rack, and was like alright McFurry, I've had enough of your jaw boning, let's rumble, see. Bama squared up, and Furry did something no one expected. He literally arched his back, made his hands into claws, and faking hissed like a cat. Bama said fuck it, and we all went to get trashed at the bar. Since furry point at this time in history, none of us knew that the furry culture was an actual thing. We just thought he was autistic. But our curiosity loomed over us like a cloud. So the next time he did his chair two door knob home alone sheet, we peeked through the window at him. Furry took a small bowl out of his secretary, filled it up with water, sat down in front of his laptop, and lapped at it like a kitty. We immediately started kicking the door, and banging on the window yelling and laughing like idiots, because we didn't know what else to do. He reacted as we expected, straight denial and deflection point life continued, just weird interactions, sheet talking, major revelations about furry, such as his favorite form of exercise, was practicing sword play. As I'm writing this out, I'm also realizing he is an eggbird, so thanks for allowing me this epiphany. One day I was bored, and horny and tired of his sheet, so after letting him run his mouth I decided fuck it, and goaded him into a fight. Really infantile and useless of me, I know, especially because he couldn't fight to save his life. I blackened his eyes, and busted his lip, and then right away went to one of my NCOs, and told him hey dad, furry and I just got into it, he's my beach now, I think I faked up, just giving you a heads up. Guy was like what the fuck recourse a thing, you big corn fed yankee hillbilly. To be honest, I was worried that furry was gonna go and blue falcon my ass or something, so that's why I immediately went to my NCO as damage control. Luckily it was taken care of in-house, and the most that came of it was a gunny asking furry the fuck happened to his face, to which furry said he got hurt practicing his sparring. Gunny asked if he was boxing, furry clarified that he was sparring with swords, gunny then made comments to the whole platoon about why how this is, why he drinks too much, and hates his children. Everyone goes their separate ways, wasn't until a few years later, that I see furry at another base, he was in a platoon with a buddy mine. I had grown up a little since then, so when I tried to say hey to furry and catch up, I was angered by his unwillingness to even look at or acknowledge me. So then I started to joke with my buddy and some other dudes about furry, and I and our history, and that's why he acts like a beat dog around me. I must have done something right, because I guess he never had an air of superiority towards other marines, never talked about his upbringing or his family, or whatever. So pretty much, that's the kind of heroes, that us wearing an oath, to support and defend the constitution of this fine country and all of your freedoms. You're welcome for my service point edit yes, I know I'm a dick who sometimes uses language and words that can strike some people's ears like lightning, and this story is rough, and not a good perception of me, but I'm not advocating bullying I don't know what I'm advocating, I'm just here for a good time, 